Hey, Redcon Raider here. With special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Solasta, Lost Valley, as the adventure continues. And today we have our sights set on the mysterious ruins just south of the swamp which, uh, based on some light research, appears to be pretty much the only quest in our journal right now that will not burn our rep with one or more of the factions. That said, um, we're going to go check this place out, obviously. But then, uh, then I think it is finally time to cut ties with the Dominion. As we've seen, his quests are getting harder and harder to sort of dance around without pissing someone else off. And ultimately, if we are taking sides, it's not going to be with the Dominion. I think that much, at least, is pretty clear. Regardless, uh, our first stop is actually going to be the Verdant Valley, because we've got cash to burn and I'd like to pick up some new upgrades. We've also got that level up in the queue, but it turns out it's a pretty basic one, so we'll get that taken care of too. Wandering Mummies. Wow, I didn't even realize they had mummies in this game. Man, mummies. You know, I ran tabletop games for like 20 years. I don't think I ever really used these guys. Aside from maybe one pre-canned module. But uh, I remember them being like tougher zombies with slam attacks and... Mummy rot. Not really sure how mummy rot would even translate into 5e. I guess we should keep our distance and pick these guys off from range. even that tough. Yeah, yeah. They've only got like 60 hit points. I think a fireball might finish the job. We'll set Spiegel up over here as bait. He is expendable. Circle of blasting already coming in handy. Nah. 
Let's not risk losing more of these things than we have to. Might be moot anyway, given that Mora's up next, so uh, let's see what this does for us. Coming back. <laughs> My goodness. You know what? I do now recall that mummies are vulnerable to fire damage. So, good to know. <gasps> and I think we're done here. So these were like lesser mummies. That does make me wonder if um, they have full-on mummy lords in the game as well. They did have white lords. I think that's what we fought back in the ruined temple. And uh, I do find it interesting that uh, they just have so many new creatures in the bestiary now. You know, mummies here, bullets last time around, stone golems and hags before that, all of them new to Lost Valley. Which, uh, which indicates that not only is this a full-length expansion, it's also just a large, glorified excuse to add all of these new creatures and resources and items and whatnot to the, uh, to the dungeon builder to allow for a much greater variety of fan-made content, uh, custom dungeons and adventures, and I appreciate that. And there's our level up. And like I said, this is all pretty straightforward this time. More hit points, more spells, and attribute points. And of course, given our complete lack of strength boosting items, aside from that morning star, which we're not going to make, I think we'll go ahead and bump Eben's strength up to 18. My original plan for 8 was to grab him that feat that would round his con out to 14 and give him an extra plus one hit point per level on top of that, but that feels somewhat redundant now that we have that con boosting belt. Next we've got spells and I'm pretty happy with what we've got here. So I'm thinking we'll just grab Spider Climb for uh, extra non-combat mobility. It's concentration-based, so we don't really want to risk using it during a fight. Next, we've got Thygor. And given that Constitution is more his jam, I'm thinking we will go ahead and grab that uh, con-boosting feat. The one that also gives him an extra layer of hit points. He is, essentially, our dedicated tank and doing a pretty admirable job of it. So higher con means more hit points and better savings throws. I'm actually a bit torn on whether to uh, round his con up to 18 or bump his strength to 20 once we hit level 12. But we've got uh, a fair bit of time before we actually get there, so I guess there's no point in rushing into a decision just yet. Next up we have Garvin. And zero questions here, we are maxing out his wisdom. As for his new spell, it's not going to be Dark Vision but will instead be Wall of Fire. And uh, while I do feel like Spike Growth is the better option when it comes to uh, crowd control, because it actually slows opponents, 
There's a lot to be said for the higher spike damage of Wall of Fire, as well as the better mutability of its exact boundaries. Likewise with Mora, no question here, we're maxing out her charisma. That'll bump her spellcasting and her social skills she never gets to use. And with her new spell. There is a part of me that feels obligated to grab a fourth level spell just because we can, but none of these really appeal to me. So, you know, I think um, I've held off on it a while now, but I think we're going to go ahead and grab Magic Missile. Having the late, great Tuznan with us reminded me how nice it is to have to have that sort of arcane firepower at your fingertips. No save, auto damage. Very, uh, very convenient for a wide variety of situations. I think we'll just save the higher level stuff for when we've got more slots to play with. And that's it. That's level 8. So on we go to the Verdant Valley for some other upgrades. Then we'll check out those ruins. Samco, I see you're still here. That seems odd. Maybe the uh, writers got their wires crossed and it was supposed to be Charmer, who we name dropped during that discussion with the rebel leader. Like I said last time, it really didn't make much sense that we just sort of name dropped Samco out of the blue. Or that um, Hasdrubal seemed to recognize that she was a spy because Charmer was the only one that we ever discussed with him. Let me just eke out a little more gold here. All right, let's see what we can afford. I mean, obviously we're taking the plus one shield. I was really hoping we'd find one, but since we have not, we'll buy one. And the bracers of defense are a maybe. I'm still kind of torn on that. On the one hand, plus two AC is nice, but uh, I was really hoping we'd have some magic robes or something to pair it with, and we have not had much luck on that front. So it might be simpler to grab the uh, feat that gives her light armor proficiency at 12, if we haven't found anything by then. With the added benefit being that plus two leather or plus two studded leather would give her more armor than the bracers, at no attunement cost. With the alternative, I suppose, being that we uh, we dump the Cloak of Elvenkind to make room for the uh, Bracers. Which would be a shame. That thing's come in handy. We will instead grab the Gloves of Missile Snaring for Garvin. And we will definitely take that handy haversack. And I think that's it. We'll save a little gold for later.
Ah, there we go. Very nice. Oh, it is a uh, shame you can't share a magic shield across multiple weapon slots. That would make things slightly simpler. And it'd also be nice to find a magic wooden shield for Garvin, but uh, I don't know if those are in the game. I suppose for now he'll just have to make do with fancy magic gloves. Darn. Let's get some more trade fodder going. Gotta get some use out of all this random garbage we keep picking up. And we are good. Onward, my friends. Adventure awaits. Three days out, so we're pretty much guaranteed a random encounter. I wonder what strange fantastical beast we'll encounter this time. Oh, <laughs> another stone golem. Fair enough. Easy XP, crafting gems. Yeah, I can live with that. Let's see if we can burn this thing down before it even gets to attack us. No quarter given. My ankles. Spiegel on deck. That's battle. I'll get you yet. Kind of squandered that action surge, but still, not bad. Ooh, empowered magic missile. Yes, please. Not too shabby. Again, harder.
Really gotta find a better weapon for Thigor. Oh, shoot. I didn't leave. Space cleared for lightning. All right. I thought you could fight. Stop that. No draining on that attack. I guess that's just clay golems. You have them now. hundred XP. Not bad for two rounds work. Plus a sapphire. We'll take that. And back to sleep. Halfway on that mall, we're getting there. Looks like a teleporter? Okay. We've got a gate. We've got footsteps leading up to it. Human tracks. That's got to be our missing forge scouts. Let's get buffs up. Might have been a bit premature on spider climb, but we'll see if it comes in handy. Door closed behind us. And we've got orcs. Including an orc grim blade. And we know how dangerous those guys can be.
Shaman, and Chieftain. This is the same mix we saw back in the Minotaur maze. So yeah, yeah, we, we should be able to handle this. We could go for a twinned hold. That would make short work of these guys. Though we also don't know if there's more fights after this one. So maybe we should conserve resources. Here we go. Curses. My fault. Oh, nice. Crit on the Grim Blade. We'll take it. Okay, so we'll finish the Grim Blade first, then go for the Shaman. We've also got a Beast Master around here somewhere. Let's drop spikes on the chief. That'll keep him contained until we can get to him. Damn. Natura muto viribe. Assuming that guy's a ranger? <laughs> That's the Grim Blade. Ah, and we're too far away to follow through. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have, um, I shouldn't have tied up our concentration on spider climb so early. Because now I don't want to squander it with expeditious retreat. All right, well, this is my fault. It is wasteful, but we'll just miss the steps entirely. I'd say that was worth it. Soften up the chief. I'm sure the melee guys can mow down the beast master. Next one. Oh, he's standing on an interactive object. Interesting.
Nice. That actually works out pretty nicely. Keep them coming. And of course, we'll drop the spikes momentarily. Garbin, spikes down, please. Natura Encho Malis. I win again. Though ultimately moot, because we are victorious. Though I suppose we'd still want to drop them for exploration, so that's fine. So what do we have going on here? Right, right. Two buttons with matching symbols on the floor. Seems pretty straightforward. Let's uh, check out that interactive object before we push the other button. Bandit's Journal. We followed them to the entrance of the temple, but we lost them inside. This place is far too dangerous for us to risk it. We don't get paid enough anyway. We will leave tomorrow. Is that the orcs or someone else? Well, I mean, regardless, I suppose the big takeaway here is that this is yet another plot to undermine the forge, likely by the masked. Whether or not the uh, orcs are the bandits, someone hired a group to follow and presumably rob or kill the forge scouts that were investigating these ruins. The uh, bandits just balked at actually following them inside. Okay, what did that do? I was really expecting it to open like a, a secret door or a portal or something. There are no corpses here, so that's good at least. It implies the scouts are still inside. Oh, that is not the way we came in. Interesting. That's pretty trippy. Wow, this room wasn't there before. How do we get outside now? Uh, that is an excellent question, Evan. I wish I could answer it. Let's go ahead and track this one. Apparently it is more than just a one-off. More symbols. No buttons, though. Look, a an underground lake or river. What are you talking about? This is a library. What? In the Badlands. We get it. Thank you. So where do we go? Books or fish? Oh, I like that.
Yeah, so apparently there's a lot more to this place than I thought there would be. I was expecting another sort of one-and-done combat encounter. But this, this is a whole lot more creative. I very much appreciate that. I'm betting we'll find our buttons inside these rooms. So let's, um, let's hit the docks first. Perhaps we can uh, secure an alternate exit before we go any deeper. We've got Skelemen. All right, let's hold here, away from the instant death cliffs. Not a great opener, Mora. But we do have surprise, and we can now see that there are two skeletal marksmen and a skeletal sorcerer somewhere in back. So we may not be able to hang back after all. We will use Sleet Storm to block line of sight on that left side. That'll uh, hopefully keep them confuzzled for a moment, and maybe even flush them towards us. Let's do it like this. suppose we could just push this guy in the drink. That would be the most efficient course of action. But I'd kind of like to uh, salvage that loot if possible, as opposed to just destroying it. I would still like to purchase a uh, cloak of protection from Mudstrider. should have tucked the sleet storm further back and then it would have covered the sorcerer but in my defense we could not actually see it at the time Don't it. Though I guess that does still box them in for our melee guys so that is still useful
Oh, interesting. Okay. Again, harder. You know, the Sleet Storm didn't work out the way I hoped it would, but it did get some interesting results. We can use this. tag. Still in stealth, too. Still getting some decent mileage out of that elven cloak. Drop the sleet. Natura Encho Malvins. Marksman whittled. We'll need to shuffle Lairin into a more defensive position. No quarter given. getting some decent mileage out of that amulet, too. Eben. Not bad. And there goes Spider Climb. Yeah, Spider Climb might not have been a great choice for him. Concentration spells on a front liner are rough. Try again. Alright, let's get the knight off of Eben. Free him up to go after softer targets. I, too, derive pleasure from this event that has transpired. And harass the marksman. And you're dead. 
and harass the sorcerer. Arcana, Muto, Viribe. Expeditious advance. I figured the uh, marksman's a lower threat. Stop that. I spoke too soon. Nicely thrown. And I notice we cannot pick our javelins back up, so I guess that's it for the javelins. I wish I knew exactly how that worked. Like... Like, is there a random chance you lose them? Is there a perception check? Is there just a finite amount of times you can throw them before they're lost? Oh my goodness. I think the RNG has finally smiled on us because that looks to be plus two plate mail. And a plus two Dwarven Warhammer. Yeah, we will immediately get this stuff ID'd and parceled out. Boo! Adamantine plate. And a plus two Warhammer. Okay, that's respectable. Well, the Warhammer, at least, is still a solid upgrade. That's an extra plus one to hit and damage. Though it is also a switch from slashing to blunt damage, which can make a difference. So we'll go ahead and slap the longsword in his offslot. Sadly, I am somewhat less enamored with the adamantine plate. We, uh, we found some of this back in... Back in uh, Crown of the Magister as well. It's essentially plate mail with no pluses, but which instead downgrades any critical hits the wearer suffers. And honestly, I'd rather just have the bonus ace. Oh well, still good sales fodder. And that does certainly imply our other button is in that library.
No exit, but we did find some really nice loot. We are past time, but let's have a peek at the library, see what's waiting for us there. Oh, I didn't notice those footprints. So I guess that's where our scouts went. So maybe we are actually done here. If all we have to do is talk to some scouts, then yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll knock that out before we hit the pause button. This place is incredible. Yeah, it's not bad. Kind of dark. Reading here would be bad for your eyes. Another dusty book. Cool. Thanks for that, Evan. What would I do without you? Dark Weaver. And a Badlands Hunter. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say those are not our Forge Scouts. Those must be the bandits who left that journal up top. They must have tried to leave only to find themselves trapped in here because of the, uh, because of the magic door. Well, that certainly doesn't bode well for the scouts. Um, okay, well. Sadly, we are out of time. I mean, we could go for another couple of minutes, but not enough, I think, to, to do an entire extra fight. So we'll hit the pause button for now. I'll work out some tacticals so we're ready to take these guys down next time around. And uh, hopefully we'll find those scouts still alive and kicking. Though, at this point, it's not looking great for them, I think. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Solesta Lost Valley, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. We get it. Thank you.